Hello, my name is Kirioth, and today we're going to have a little chat about this Sisters of Battle. There's been more stuff in the Battle Sister Bulletin, and to be honest, I wasn't initially planning to do anything with it, purely because at this point, I feel like my, my feelings on the Sisters of Battle are pretty well documented. I think I've gushed many a time, I've expressed my joy at the fact that they are getting their own plastic line, finally, many a time. I feel like it's out there. It's out there. The, the amount I'm looking forward to this is pretty clear at this stage. But a few of you asked me to actually look at this stuff and talk about it, and there is something here that I do want to talk about, because initially it would have just been me going, well, yeah, I, I like the way they look. They look great. They look really nice. I'm looking forward to seeing them, and so on and so forth. Things I've already said before many, many times, because it's this is a baffling plastic. I mean, what, what do you want from it? Of course I'm excited. But there is actually something that I've got from this particular bulletin, which is not putting a damper on my excitement, that's not fair to say. I'm still completely looking forward to to this line dropping and to actually being able to have a Sisters of Battle army that is not entirely in metal and is not in the weird limbo spot of being a thing but also not really a thing and being kind of supportive but not really supportive and just... I'm just looking forward to it being an actual army that I can look forward to owning. But, but, there is something to be said about the the current lineup of models that we've been that we've been shown recently in this specific Battle Sister Bulletin. So I do like this model. Obviously, it's a render, it's not a print or anything like that, it's not a final plastic or anything like that. But the style of these is is constant, it's remained. It's what I wanted to see from a redesign of the Sisters of Battle. I wanted them to stay pretty true to the original. And options for those who wanted a more modern look I thought might be nice, but I'm someone who's happy with the classic look, and so they're not being, by the looks of it, that kind of more modern alternative doesn't bother me personally, although I can understand why some people might want that. I'm just happy that they are what they are. This is absolutely perfect to me. There is a particular trend, however, when we look at these models that's making me making me think that the level of customization that I might like from this range will not be there, basically. So, as you can see, it's a nicely posed model. She's in a running pose. She's got the bolter up to the back. I like the fact that the bolter is still pretty big on the model because, they, of course, they are not enhanced in the way, same way that Space Marines are enhanced. They are normal. They are just standard women, and so the bolter would be just that little bit oversized for the person. I like that that's been maintained. In fact, it creates even more, if anything, an aura of how badass you are if you're carrying a gun that large and still running about with it. I do like that. It's a nice pose. It's a nice model. And if we go down the page, again, there's something about, there's something about, uh, a, <laughs> there's something about a sister holding a storm bolter that just makes me happy every time. Again, it's a nicely posed model. It's not quite as much of an action pose. It's a little bit more static, but it doesn't look lifeless. It doesn't look like a statue. It looks still in motion, just not as not as mobile as the previous one. But again, it's a really nice looking model. And they've they're maintaining the way the Sisters of Battle look really nicely. Again, if we go down again, we've got uh, the classic flamer there, and again, an excellent pose and I like the fact that there seems to be flame built into that base that's cool that's funky I like it a lot but there is something with all of these models so far and I'm assuming that you've noticed it at this point but just in case you haven't these do not look like multi-pose models in any way shape or form they are all by the look of it monopose now it might be that you might be able to switch weapons but the actual models themselves are do not look like they're customizable. They do not look like they're poseable. They look monopose. They, in a way, to be honest, look a little bit like they could be easy to build purely because of, I mean, just the the amount of detail and stuff on these. I feel like it, it's going to be damn near impossible to make it so that they are like properly poseable. Like when you look at these at these models. There is so much in the way of in the way of decoration, in the way of like accessories that when you look at the cloak over the top, the robe that they're wearing, when you look at the grenades on the belt, the way that there are things like these 
these like extra belt sections going around the, the midriff there. The different styles of upper armour and just all of the all of the overlapping detail really makes me think that these are not going to be in almost in any way like easily reposed. They do very much look like they are going to be monoposed because I don't know how else you'll be able to maintain that level of detail without having it without reducing the customizability of each individual model. It's the same thing with the Death Guard. It's exactly the same thing with the Death Guard. There is a huge amount of detail on the Death Guard models. There's so much like overlapping intestinal diseasey bits and you know there's so many there's so many bits here and there that hang down from the the chest across the waist onto the legs. There's so many different levels of detail on each model that you can't really mess with them all that much. You can, if you want to take a, a craft knife to them and you want to take some green stuff to them and you really want to go for it, then you can obviously change things around here and there. But I feel like it's going to be the same with these. I feel like it's going to be exactly the same. Where well, maybe, maybe not easy to build, so to speak, but the level of customization just will not be there for these models because you can't maintain that amount of detail whilst making them fully poseable. And when you look at that leg and you look at the, the robe at the front and the back, how do you make it so that you can repose that leg? You you can't. The robe will be part, like it will be part of it. It'll be connected to it unless they unless they do something. I, I don't know. I don't know how you'd do it so that you had that same motion whilst making it possible to switch the pose on that model. Now, there is, right down the bottom here, there is a fully painted up Sister of Battle, which I really, really like. I like the colour scheme. I like everything about these about these painted ones because they properly show them kind of, I guess, in, in their, like, their final form. It gives you a much better idea as to how they're going to look how they're going to work as a as like a, a coherent force on the tabletop. It adds that extra layer of of perspective to them. But you can't look at that and tell me with the way the robes work, the way the sleeves work, the way you've got the the long uh, purity seal type parchment coming down the back. You can't tell me that that is going to be posable. I just don't think it is. I just don't think it is. I think we're going to have a slight issue in that if you have a decently sized army of these girls, you're going to end up with a a good number of repeats in terms of poses, in terms of in terms of models because I just can't see how you would maintain that style consistently throughout without cutting down on like the level of customization per model. I just don't see how you'd do it. I mean, there are things on there that are clearly just molded on. They are not things that are replaceable. Now, if that's a if that's a print, then it may well be that actually there are things on there that you can take off. Like I think I think I can see a, a grenade off to one side, and there looks to be some sort of canister or, or container on the other. And it could be that those arrive separately. That you do choose where to put them. But even then, I don't know how you would match, say, the top half of this model to the one that was running further up the page. I don't know how you'd match the 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 top half of the one that was running to the one that has the flamer and is standing on the base with the flames coming off the base. I'm still looking forward to them. Don't get me wrong. I'm still absolutely thrilled they're actually on their way. They are being worked on. We are actively getting the Sisters of Battle properly updated in plastic to a, to a state that they should have been in before. And I'll maintain that they should have been updated way before this, because they are a they are a properly iconic part of Warhammer Forty K. They have most definitely like languished in the in the near forgotten state that they're in for way way too long. And obviously, when it comes to things like you know what Games Workshop decides to update next, a huge amount of that is driven by things like it's driven by things like sale and customer interest and. All of that stuff. You know, that's why we have so many Space Marines. That's why we've had the big boost of chaos. It's stuff that sells. But to me, you either need to support a line or you need to not have that line. It looks way worse just having something be partially supported and mostly ignored 
than it does to say, okay, this isn't shifting, it's not working, we're going to make space for something else. And sisters have been in that position for so long. We'll say one other thing that makes me excited about all of the sister stuff, despite the, what to me looks like probably, like, lack of customization, is they have clarified that you will have enough helmets for every single model. That is a massive deal to me. I much prefer models with helmets, with power armor especially. I want to see helmets, not bare heads. So the fact that they are going to provide enough helmets for every single sister makes me way, way happier. It makes me genuinely excited because I don't want to be painting faces. I don't want to paint hair. I want them all properly suited up for a fight. And that includes sticking your pretty awesome looking helmet on at the start of the battle and not going out there with your face exposed because that's a great way to get shot and died immediately. Shot and died, shot and killed, close enough. So yeah, still looking forward to them, still happy that it's happening, still intend to buy far too many, but right now I don't think they're going to be customizable. I think they're mostly going to be monopose. I don't think there's going to be a huge amount you can do to properly repose and shift them as as you others might like to. But with the more detail you put on something, the harder it is to maintain that ability to keep different poses. And if it's a toss-up between between making them more bland but more poseable or keeping them more detailed but making them less poseable, to be honest, I will take the detail because, to me, unlike the Death Guard stuff, it's not overdone. It's not, like, way out there. It's appropriate for what they are and it provides the silhouette that they should have. And... If that means I can't mess with them as much as I would ordinarily like to, I'll take the trade off because I'm perfectly happy with how this looks. So yeah, that is what I'm where I'm at with the Sisters of Battle stuff. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Whether you think they will be posable, whether it'll just be certain models that will be monoposed, whether you think they'll be more customizable than I'm assuming they'll be, whether you mind either way. In the meantime, feel free to click all of the things, Patreon, video, subscribe, all of that shit. There is a affiliate link in the description down below should you wish to buy some 40k stuff to tide you over. It's between 15 and 25% off. And if you click it, I get a little something for sending you that way. So you can do that if you like. You don't have to. It's entirely up to you. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Toodaloo.